Hello, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. It's a happy day because the amplifier is at the back of the bench there. It's now working properly, as far as I can tell at this point. So I'm turning my attention now to the receiver for this uh, console. There's the front of it there. And you'll see on my bench some vacuum tubes. No, you won't see it like that. You'll see it like that though. Five tubes here. So if you look at the receiver, there are five empty sockets and there are three tubes remaining over here. What happened? I tested these tubes last night. The good ones are in here. One of these isn't all that good even. It's right on the line and all these tubes tested bad. How does that happen? How, how, how does that happen? You get five bad tubes. Uh, two of these test with shorts in them and one of them is completely dead and I think two others are ridiculously low. I'm going to retest these tubes here on video to double check and make sure they're that they are what they appear to be dead and useless but really how do you end up with five out of eight tubes defective and there may even be a sixth one i haven't tested this tube yet this is a you know th this whole receiver and amplifier are among the last sort of tube equipment to come out onto the market and they contain some of the last tubes that were manufactured some of those last tubes I cannot find the directions to test them on my tube testers so either I don't have a copy of an update or there never was an update issue for some of these tubes so I've hunted around ferociously to find out how to test this tube 6C9 turns out one of my other testers uh, my precise 111 will test this guy so he hasn't been tested yet but that betcha he's dead too why not that's that would be the odds all right so let's get these guys going back over here. Now, yeah, I'm going to fool around with the camera here and get everything working right before we carry on. Okay, so the first tube we're going to try is a 12 AU7 and the interesting thing is the place where this came out on the receiver says 12 AX7, not 12 AU7. This is all set for 12AU7 because I think this is the last tube I tested. Let's just do a quick check here. Sure it is. Okay. Switch on. Now even though this is a 12 volt tube, in this tester it's tested at 6 volts. So it must be running the two heaters in kind of in parallel here as opposed to series for 12 volts. That's probably why this, this tube can work in the uh, receiver also. Uh, most of the tubes are 6 volt tubes so this must be powered with 6 volts got it <laughs> okay any shorts here we go I think this tube tested really low if I remember right now it's supposed to test 710 so 710 is about there yeah that's low all right now it's a two-part tube. I get at the second part by flipping those switches, and it's just as low. That's that's terribly low, and that's why this is in the bunch of dead. In with my dead tubes. Okay, now I think there might be one more of these. Let me look. I don't think so. I think, I think let's see. What's this one? This one is a uh, 12AT7. 12AT7. Six point three signal level four sixteen L for bias PGK seven seven PGK seven seven three five one six three five one six F thirty seven This time the reject point is up over a thousand here. Fortunately, I believe I've got replacements for all these tubes. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. So this is uh, also involves uh, two tests. It's a twin twin triode, just like the last tube. No shorts. Again, should be up over a thousand, up like here. Hmm. Uh, 
and the other half's a little bit better but look it's halfway the it's going up slowly it's still warming up a little bit but it's not going to get there that's for sure so 1190 is the reject point so if this got up to 1200 up here it, 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 i should be rejecting it so this is way below the rejection point that's those two now we're going to do uh, six two six ba sixes so bear with me here some of you really enjoy watching me do tube testing so i'll just keep it rolling this will be quick anyway six have a little trouble seeing there six b a six b a six there it is 6.3 signal level 4 10 l 52763 4100 4100 33 and most importantly played on C 6. Three in you go. Now. Short circuit on, on this setting, on setting one. Beat it down to zero. And a test. Oh, it's a dead tube. So this one, this one is is uh, dead. Now we have another six B A six here. Six B A six. See the pilot light flicker there. I wonder if they located the pilot light up here, so you can have your eyes on it as you plugged in tubes. Okay, yeah, I think this guy has a short on pin one. Yeah, there it is again, only it's 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 gone down again. Now, last time I tested this tube, this short was, you see it's bopping around there. I don't know why it goes away like that. Okay, tube test. Oh, dead tube again. Now, have I got this set right? Let's just let get a couple of readings that uh, I am testing dead tubes, so I shouldn't be too surprised there. They're dead. 5276. 5276. 3, 40, 100. Yeah, it's set right. Oh, no, it's not. 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 Repeat. Ha. Huh. Okay, so there's the short showing up quite clearly. I'm not going to test this tube. The tube has a short in it. You should not test it. I'm going to bring back the other 6BA6 because I, I messed up there and left these switches in the wrong spot. But I think it's going to test dead in any case. Let's see. I don't know that for sure. Let's see. Here we go. There's a short showing up on one. Test it anyway, it shows up. But with a short on pin one. Now here's the strange thing. Here's a 6BE6, a the 6BE6. 6BE6. Uh, six Let me set this up for it. Um, 6.348L. 51763 51763 five, 3000 3, 41 the meter right C old tube tested 
Okay, here we go. There. In position one again, another short. So we'll test the tube. Here we are. That basically proves that all these tubes are bad. How do you end up with five bad tubes in one receiver? How could that happen, really? Um, somebody continued to operate the receiver long after one of these tubes had failed because they were still playing records or doing something with this console besides listening to the radio. Or perhaps a couple of these tubes only affect the AM side or the FM side and the other receiver part was being used. I don't know, how do you keep using one of these things with all these dead tubes? You kind of imagine one tube dead maybe a couple weeks. But, uh, but that's the situation. So I've got to fish up a bunch of replacements here uh, before we even try operating this. And you know what I'm going to do next, actually. Next I'm going to go after this tube here. This is the 6C9. We might as well find out what Well, I guess we know what happened to that tube. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I was just in the, in the process of saying I think I have some replacements. <laughs> well, we get to have a good look at this tube now. We can look right inside it and see what the heck is going on. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, a little bit of a setback here. <laughs> uh, he laughs, but I don't know. A 6C9, you know, that's probably not going to be easy to find. Uh, things kind of went downhill just now. Okay, so I hunted around to see if I have a spare 6C9. I don't, because I think these are such recent tubes. Uh, you know, I can be pretty sure that if I put this back in, it's not going to work uh, too well. So now I've got a radio basically full of dead tubes, because even of the three that are in here, two of them are very weak. I don't know why, but... So, one of the plans for this whole receiver is not so much is, is not to, to use it as a radio, but to use it to play records and with the help of a Bluetooth connection to access uh, internet music and your iPhone, all that kind of stuff. So losing the receiver here is not a big deal at all. In fact, even if I put all good tubes in here, I might be 10 hours away from making this work. We might even discover it's got silver mica disease, it's of the right age for that kind of thing. There, there could be there could be uh, many death knells ringing inside here. And you consider what happened to the tubes, what's happened to everything else. So, an alternative approach here is to concentrate on making the Bluetooth receiver work with this and the record player. So I think all that's needed in here, really, to make this work as a good front end are these two uh, audio amplifier tubes, the 12AX7s. Although in this position, there was a 12 AU7. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you can do that. I'm not sure. Just pop it in there and get a, a little bit of a different performance out of it. So uh, 12 AX7 here and here. And I think I could pull out all the rest of these tubes. They would not be missed. Don't use the radio AM or FM. Concentrate on the uh, tape, tape input here and the uh, phono input over there. And just make sure that is working. I think, I think the receivers are right off for me at this point. Now, anybody anywhere down the road, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, could load this thing up with tubes again and bring it all back to life. And good luck to them, and I hope they can find a 6C9 to do it. Uh, but for now, I think this is the situation. Now, just, just think for a minute. This guy was on his way to the scrapyard, but he's not going to be after this. He's going he's to be back busily, uh, busily. He's going to be back doing good things for somebody. Even if I got the AM radio, who wants to listen to AM? Come on. If I got the FM radio working really great, how great can it really be compared to Bluetooth? So, uh, so make it look nice and make it work good with Bluetooth and phono. Okay, that's the objective. So that being the objective, um, and I don't have a schematic. And I can't be sure what these tubes are doing. I better find another 12 AX7 to stick in here pull the rest of the tubes out and start seeing if this guy will send a signal over to the amplifier and all that kind of stuff. We'll see, we'll see if it even works. 
Maybe I only need one of these tubes in here. Okay, so after some hunting, I found the Bluetooth receiver I'm going to use. So I'm going to set this up to work through the tape inputs here and get this guy ready for experimenting to see if it'll work. I think it'll work. I think it'll be quiet. Okay, so the uh, word on the street is that the 12 uh, AX7, 12 AU7, 12 AT7 are all very similar tubes, can be direct swapped. The difference between them, the main difference is the different gain. So 12 AX7 is the high gain one. I think it has a uh, amplification factor of 100. 12 um, AT, less so, somewhere around 60. And 12 AU is quite low at 20. So you wouldn't want to use a 12 AU uh, 7 where uh, a amplifier is calling for a 12 AX7 because the amplifier is looking for high gain and the 12 AU is just not going to have it. So having the 12 AU7 in there is, uh, well, it indicates a couple things. One, people have worked on this and uh, unfortunately it stuck a, a probably the inappropriate swap into here and this, even if this were good, if this is the preamp for the amplifier over yonder, then probably this would cause weak output. So there's a 12 AX7 here and a 12 AX7 here. Uh, are both these needed? Um, it's possible. Could be left channel, right channel, I don't know. Could be pre-preamp, preamp, and then it's on its way out. I don't know, offhand. Uh, so, uh, I have, sure, I have lots of 12 AX7s. It's a 12 AT7 sitting right here, which I tested. I can't remember the result of this. I'm going to retest this. I think it was very low. I think, I think it was very, very low. Um, AT7. Yeah, let me test this guy again and then I'll, I'll find a suitable tube to put in there at least to get us through the testing phase of fooling around with this guy. Okay, the 12 AT7 tests uh, pretty good on one half the tube. The other half is okay. So we can at least experiment with this. This should, should provide what we need. So I think that's all we probably need in here. These two tubes, the rest can be empty. They're all radio tubes, I'm pretty sure. And uh, so we just need to make the uh, connections between the amplifier and the receiver here, which I have not done yet, which I will do next. Okay, so you can see the Bluetooth receiver here. It's actually connected to my phone right now. You can see the two uh, audio cables coming out. They're going straight into the video sound system you are listening to. I'm just going to raise the volume a bit. The purpose is to make sure this is working before I go any further. What's happening? Oh yeah, okay, no problem there. So, I will move the uh, Bluetooth outputs the inputs here I think we're pretty much ready to test this guy out uh, I'm gonna spin this whole thing around there's not much to see back here anymore Make sure no cables are touching those super hot tubes. All is good. Volume, I don't know if the volume control is going to have an effect. I suspect it will. Oops. Yeah, this foam material here is just, you just touch it and it just crumbles off like this. Like this. Okay, put it on tape. When I apply power, this will be on. Uh, the short circuit's still in place back there. I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I'm pretty sure that won't interfere with this. Um, a short, short circuit, um, the, uh, never mind. <laughs> Here we go. 
Okay, so we're just still operating the dim bulbs over there, just to be sure. Trying to see if the tubes in here are heating up. Let's give it full power. Now hopefully, no squeal, no oscillation, no hum. Sounds great to me. Now, the Bluetooth should be playing. If I turn the volume up, maybe we'll hear it. Ha. Okay, so now I have to be careful. I'm playing commercial music on a YouTube video, and any more than about five seconds of it, I'll get hit with a copyright, which will interfere with me posting the video. So I got to be a little careful here. I only heard one channel. The volume went up quite high, and I only heard one channel. So let's let's see if we can get the the uh, first. I'm going to change the program that we're listening to here. Yeah, I'm going to stop for a second and just get get a program we can continuously play here, not music. Okay, so we'll listen to some talk here. This is a CBC FM. Uh, it should be uh, very high quality. But it certainly isn't. It's really muffled, obviously. Uh, trouble. That's a little better. Base. And so when you look up in the sky and you see shooting stars or falling stars, you're seeing Balance. the movement of spirit between the walking world. One channel completely uh, silent. And the song is called Little Star, which in Korean is the word for it. Is and volume. That's full volume. Uh, I, I, I think the shortfall is, is in here. I think it's the uh, the two tubes that are in here. The 12AX7 and the 12AT are just not doing the job here. Let me pull out the 12AX7 and see if it's involved in this. Maybe it's not at all. So I'm going to pull it right out of here. Let's see if I throw it on the floor when I pull it out. First, the hum level in here went down when I pulled that tube out, and I, I think everything is silent. So clearly, this tube is important in the operation of the, of the whole thing. I'm going to test this tube again. Right, let's just do it right now. Let's just do it right now. Do it, do it live. We'll do it live. That's what we'll do. Twelve. 12 AX7. Yep. 12 AX7. 6.3 signal level 2. Drop some more tubes on the floor. 18 L. 18 L. PGK77. PGK77. Same as the other tube. 3516. F. Okay, so it's you know you can, these tubes are swappable, so the setting should be the same for the 12AX, 12AT, and 12AU. The only variation would be this. Let's just check that. 47, right? 47. <laughs> okay, in goes the 12AX7. So if this if that, now we don't know for sure the other tube is needed. So uh, after we test this, we'll pop it in, we'll pop out the other tube and see if the two of them are, are required for this. Maybe only one of them is. Maybe only this one. Okay, quick check on shorts. Not shorted. One half the tube. Okay, and the number it's supposed to come up to is a thousand, just over a thousand. See, it's right at the uh, replace, replace point. That half the tube, other half. Pretty much the same. So, so this tube is working, but nothing to write home about. 12 AX7 1040, and it's a like uh, it's like 10 1070 on here. You don't even trust that this meter is that accurate. So, so this is definitely not your powerful 12 AX7, but much more powerful than the 12 AT. Let's do that experiment now. We're going to put this one back in. This amp's operating and it's silent. Fantastic. Turning it off because I don't want to do this with it on. 
Okay, we'll pop this one in. And we'll take out the 12AT. The object is to find out if this tube is required. We're basically down to one tube in here. Power on again. Okay, ready to dry her out. Bluetooth should still be playing. Yeah, and nothing's coming up. So it looks like we need the two 12AX7s in here for this to operate. So I am going to uh, look through my tube stock because I previously tested all my 12AX7s. I have them all listed, numbered, and I know what their uh, transconductance measures at and all that. So I'm going to pick a couple of goodies here for this. Okay, so I found my stock of 12AX7s. I've got seven, seven of them here. So I'm going to test, find a couple of good ones. These are all good. I, I know they're good. I'm going to make sure I'm putting in the good, good ones. Okay, so I've got two uh, much better 12AX7s here. 12 ax 7 and I'm going to pop them in. Okay, the other one. So these are now the proper tubes high gain tubes. Uh, you can just kind of guess that if you have designed this for high gain and you stick in the lower gain or weak tubes, you're going to get a weak output. The tone thing is what I'm interested in. Is the tone going to be a lot better? Then is fine. Continue pulling these out here. Now how did, I, I, likewise, think about this. All these bulbs are burned out. All the tubes are burned out. All the bulbs are burned out. Does somebody just leave this on 24-7 or something? Now I heard a little squeal come out of one of the speakers there. It sounded like a bird call. There we are. It should be all warmed up. What do we get? And this is quite a shocking thing to say. You know, he got to the pinnacle and he found that it was boring. So there's something sort of nihilistic there as well. Um, something so listening to the channel with the program on it, it sounds great. When I balance it to the other channel, a low, strong hum comes out. A low, strong hum. So, you know, that might suggest an open in the cable here somewhere. So we're going to switch the leads here and see what happens. Now this should do nothing, right? Or will it? The cable's defective. Exactly the same. What it is. Just start following the signal along here and uh, see where it disappears. Here, so let me turn it up. It's a very pro-military, well, pro-America making it. So um, put the balance in favor the of the non-working channel, yeah. so when it comes on, we'll we'll know it. And again, that hum is there. Ha! Oh. Okay, so four or five times now, when I've had this receiver in here working with it, and I have wiggled or moved this panel, I get that kind of effect. Why in heaven's name would that happen? So let me take a closer look at the wires under here. Let me shut it off for now. Let's see if we can figure out what the heck goes on that every time I push this hard. Well, not a lot happening here. Let's look up under there. I'm 
working in here basically. Now, this is the kind of place where wires can break because of things being plugged in and out, but my guess is nobody ever plugged anything in out of this. That would be my guess. So you can't can't spot anything going on there. So when I flex this downwards like this. So these are AM antenna wires, and these are the FM antenna wires. Uh, you can't get a big boom out of those. So what is it? Uh, there is a ground wire hanging out here for the phono. It's kind of hanging loose. I hope it didn't go somewhere. Let me let me tighten it up a little bit here so it's not so. So it won't find its way into somewhere bad. But that's not going to cause a hum. Uh, 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 let me turn on again and poke. <laughs> it's a very powerful hum when it comes. Okay, switch on again. Okay, I'll give it a moment here. light on volume that's full blast ah, music can't have music my, my luck um, so we don't need any music right now it's this thing here just making sure I, 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 I do not know what nothing's happening okay so Flexing this must have been pushing something else. Some some other the volume right down, maybe we can't hear it. No, that didn't make sense. because uh, it was a pretty strong hum. It's like an open circuit hum. So if it's not flexing this part, then it's it's gotta be flexing in here somewhere. Oh my gosh, what what? Um, so the two the two operating tubes are up in this area here. It's this, this. Wow, this guy's really sensitive to hums. That's coming from the one channel that's dead. I think that's also coming from the dead channel. A whole new way to. So all, all around these circuits, of course, which are activated when, because just these two tubes are here. Wow. Why the only one? Why only one channel? Can we, can we kind of tell them apart? We should see parallel parts like this and this. Or these two. push button hasn't worked right. Yeah, the push button. So the push button, yeah, let's clean that right away. That's that, that's probably it. That could easily be it. Give it a shot. That's enough. Okay, and we'll flip it back and forth from uh, oh no to Put some volume up here. So it just shows you how fast things change. Um, if you one channel only it, still. And then now, um, each generation has its own particular. Uh, we'll do some channel. signal tracing through here and try to trace so the signal think, down. Um, let's see the cable carrying the audio. The freedoms that they take for granted are the result of a struggle 
they weren't given freely, they were granted it because people fought for them and people stuck their neck out. And unless people are very careful that some of those freedoms are going to be taken away. Something about the hump here, let me turn it down. So I'm wiggling the cable, you can see which one it is. It's this one in here. Yeah, imagination. I knew they just can't hear it with the volume down. Let me turn the channel all the way to the quiet, dead channel. Here's something going on. Oh. Before that, you heard the journalist and culture writer John. He's called Max. Okay, I don't want to get a shock here. Look at that. I just have this uh, rule I do not touch two separate metal entities at the same time. So, am I going to touch the chassis and grab my camera tripod, believe it or not? Even that's enough. I was just playing with this wire here. Unfortunately, my hand will go in the way here. But. I don't want to touch more, but <laughs> so I can make a couple people commit. Coming up next, on Q. Turns out it's this. What exactly is it? Is it just just bad contact? This is CBC Radio One. 99.1 FM in Okay, balance it. Oh! Well, that's volume. Duh. Hey folks, Johnny Harris here. I'm back for a new season of Still Stand. Is it Siri? What community is this channel? In right now? She said, hey, well, it's the volume again. <laughs> Watch me as I bring the country together. <laughs> that channel. Trouble full. Unfortunately, that's all the volume it's going to produce here. You can kind of fiddle the tone up a little bit. Friday and the ensuing holiday shopping season are almost upon us. It's a time of year that demands a precise. Let me set the trouble and the base in the middle. Talks to an Olympic caliber deal finder about the art of shopping on the cost of living in half an hour. Something like that. Definitely muffled. We'll turn the trouble up. News is coming on. Great. That's full volume. This is CBC News. From CBC Toronto, it is 11 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Jill Dempsey. It is cloudy and 2 degrees. The temperature holding steady at 3 for the day. Amid growing discontent within the party, Conservative leader Andrew Scheer is being forced to answer questions today about the future of his leadership. Uh, I am staying on to fight the fight that Canadians elected us to do. Uh, there are very serious risks facing this country, and Canadians expect us to stay united and stay focused on the job at hand, and that's precisely what I'm going to do. Matt Shear speaking to reporters this morning in Ottawa. He says after the party was unable to unseat the Liberals in the October election, it's understandable there is frustration within the party. But many people have opinions on what happened in the campaign. Uh, we're going through uh, all of that. Clearly, there are aspects that need to be improved upon. Uh, while we can take uh, great comfort in some of the, the gains we had in British Columbia, uh, in Atlantic Canada, we fell short in many areas. Uh, and that's J105X. And so that's exactly what I'm focused on improving, both for myself, but also our campaign, our strategy, our message, and our platform. Your comments come as a number of influential party members have formed a so, uh, if you were listening to that, of course, uh, hey, every country has its politics, and we have ours too in Canada, and while the United States might be kind of stealing the airwaves with what's going on down there, there's lots of, I wouldn't say controversial, but lots of machinations going on in the Canadian political system too, um, after we've had an election, which is commonly the state, the case, right, you have an election, the parties that lose start thinking about themselves a lot. You know, do we have the right leader? What do we have the right policy? So all that's going on in, in my country. And that um, okay. So um, bad connections here. This certainly doesn't look like cold solder joint. So it just must be straight contact onto the plug. So that's okay. I can deal with that. The tone tonal response in both channels is very very low. Uh, there's no trouble. 
So probably signal tracing through here is the way to go. Um, and uh, signal tracing at high fidelity is a little difficult for me, but maybe maybe we can figure something out here. Let, let's just try a couple things uh, with my signal tracer over here. And uh, you know what? It's not going to reach. The cord here is not going to reach. Uh, let me think about this a little bit. Okay, so the first thing we're going to try is uh, providing an alternate path around some capacitors um, in the radio to see if the capacitors that are carrying the audio signal, if one of them has lost its capacity, then it would muffle out the sound. Now, both channels are muffled out. I'm not sure what to think of that. Radio one. Okay, this will also affect the volume a lot. So the, the cable, which is going over to the amplifier, is coming in right here, and it's terminating right here. And right off of it, right away, are two capacitors, one here, and the other one hidden a little bit up in here. Those two capacitors are carrying all the audio out of here and on its way to the amplifier. So I'm going to parallel one of them. See if I can figure out which channel it is first. So I'm gonna, can we hear it? Don't hear anything. Well, the other side. Okay, let, let, let's make it a little, little more powerful. I'll touch it right with the pliers here. Okay, so that's the left channel. Hard to hear, but that's the right channel. So the left channel here. So put the sound over to the left channel only. There we are. And we'll now try to parallel this capacitor. This is a 0.01 and this is a 0.01. Just a different style. Now there's a hundred, like there's almost 200 volts on this side of this capacitor. So this is not a, it's not a minor deal here. Just momentarily is all we need. Okay, hang on to it tighter. Squeeze it tighter again. Spark there. Well, it charged up the capacitor. No change whatsoever in the audio. So the other capacitor is probably the same. I'll leave it alone. Now there's going to be some uh, capacitors blocking uh, DC between this tube and this tube. Assuming this this one is the original preamp, how can we prove that? If I follow the cable down from the uh, back, it comes into these switches. This is this is the one the Bluetooth is plugged into. It comes into these. <laughs> it comes right into, of course, the tape switch. What comes out of the tape switch? Two capacitors. So maybe 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 there. I'm not exactly sure what's on these capacitors, but in terms of voltage, I wouldn't. Wait a minute. Get the right capacitor here. Wow! I don't think I can do this. I can poke it in there safely. The other, the other one, the other one, the other one might be easier actually. The other channel. So put it back in the middle here. <laughs> it's a bit of a long shot, but uh, it's not. But Just, just, I don't know what's in there. You know, I don't know what kind of voltages I'm fooling around with. Um, that's why I, I wouldn't dare use my fingers in there. Well, so we, what we've identified is there's these two guys uh, carrying the signal. These two guys are carrying the signal. There's going to be more in there. Signal trace. It's our only hope here. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange my uh, bench just a wee bit here and get this to go properly. Okay.
Okay, here we go. Now this guy comes with his own hum. Set the audio. So first we want to hear what the signal sounds like coming right to here from that cable. So I'm going to listen up in the back there. Hope I can get it. I'll turn this down. See if I can't. Uh, Right on where the signal's coming in. That'll give me a level. All right, so it's coming in right here. Just one thing or another restricting the motion. There, there we are. That was your some of the prize money. Um, you chose an actor who actually joins you on stage in in mind. We're talking about. You know, James, it made me think that you hear about people going to theater school, like, you know, honing their craft to become an actor. See, the sound but quality is good. Being an artistic director is so different. One channel. I have to imagine. Pretty huge. Other part. channel, same level. Okay, now we'll go try to find the end of the cable. We should hear exactly the same stuff. So the end of the cable is right back in here. Here. You have a limited amount of energy. Same stuff. So now we'll come forward through the switch to the switch terminal. As much as you pop. Now we're going to jump to the other side of this capacitor, bearing in mind that there could be voltage on it, be a pop on the... We're not making nope. five shows a year. We start making... And the other channel? Where'd it go? People that we've... That teacher is there also is. in our community. Sound quality, excellent to this point. Now it disappears on this white cable. Where's that going? So the white cable is coming up to the volume control. Well, prime for a sprint, but he's already sprinted. Right. This opportunity, it seems like an essential obligation. You know what I just realized? I've got the speakers plugged into the woofer setting over here. <laughs> Set off all the alarms. Set off all the alarms. So I, w I would like to put this back into the all signal position, but this will start oscillating again, probably. So I'm going to move the, uh, the speaker from the woofer setting over to the tweeter setting. I'm pretty sure, it's not tweeter, it's kind of mid-range tweeter. Pretty sure that doesn't start this guy oscillating. Okay, power off. Turn down my uh, signal tracer. This this is probably the reason for the muffle. Of course, this would be the reason. You'd want it to be muffled. Hope my speaker wires have stayed together. Okay, this guy just starts oscillating. We may not, we may not even know it. <laughs> getting excited because I can see I can see the end of the road here is coming power back on oh power off I know what the problem is for crying out loud I've got snuffer caps in here to snuff out the input <laughs> it's two thumbs up man because I take those out she's gonna work great I know it get those out of there so this explains the whole shot. Uh, so I'm going to pull my temporary shorting capacitors out of here. Out of here. One. it in here pretty good. Really good. Let's pull this side up. Hey, come on. Hey, 
hang on for this. Hang on for dear life here. Remember those puzzles when you were a kid and play in the back of the seat of the car? Holy smokes, knock over the whole receiver. Okay, now we're going to hear volume and we're going to hear tone and we're going to walk mm -hmm. away and go, that's fantastic. That's just fantastic. Let's see if this really happens now. I'll leave these in the center position here because the tonal quality would be better, uh, I think. And we'll start there anyway. And power on. He says with a rough, gruff voice, power on. Volume down, good, because I expect it to be quite loud this time. Hum. Uh oh. Well, that's an indication of an oscillation occurring. Let's not worry about it right now. Let's hear the sound quality. Contributions to the Canadian theater scene, and so rather than a kind of finish line. Fantastic is the way I would describe that. Both channels humming, but probably because of the way things are set up here. I sure hope that's the case. Why, why would you be humming so much, you, you, you crazy amplifier? That, that, that's a pretty good hum. Now, you know what it could be? Because earlier I had discovered that these resistors here are 7 mega ohms. Um, the schematic says 1.2. The other amplifier whose photograph I had shows the same seven mega ohm resistors. Why, why would that cause a hum? Uh, you increase the input impedance here to the point where it, there's an antenna there. That would mean adding more antenna would add more hum. Add more antenna, add more hum. Let me just add a little bit of antenna here. Like this. Add more antenna. Add more hum. Not quite. Let's try this one. Add more antenna. And a buzz. Buzz on the. Uh, yeah, maybe it's the oscillation. Okay, we'll power off and we'll put these back onto the these because we know it doesn't oscillate when they're out here. Turn it back on. I almost am convinced I have to drag the entire cabinet with its speakers in here to uh, really settle this down. We decided we wanted to make something that our kids would want to go see. You know, a lot of our work our kids couldn't give a poop about. It. Like, this is boring. <laughs> um, and we have four between us right, with our respective Sounds partners. Sounds fantastic. So we decided, okay, let's make something. Let's 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 walk in. Can we do? So we talked to our buddies at the college right next door, and had a red burn, and we said, you know, we've been kind of throwing around this idea. You like, know what? I got Panto. there. And it's like, okay, I've heard of the Panto. What's a Panto? And we said, well, we went on Wikipedia, and we said, okay, you're supposed to boo, and you. I got there. Okay, so the next step is to prove this thing out in the uh, in the cabinet again. And usually I do that out in my garage, as uncomfortable as it is, and I cannot do any of it on video. The console, this thing, this console is 67 feet long. How am I going to get it in here? So that's a little project for me. Bring in the console in here and deal with it in here. Um, I'll think about this. Anyway, the situation is Bluetooth good. Record player, we don't know because we don't have it in here. That's the reason for dragging the whole console in here. And I hear an oscillation right now. So, but we won't worry about those things until this is in its regular, hooked up to its regular speakers in the regular way. And it goes away again. Great, fantastic. That's good. I like it. I like it. Thank you for watching, and uh, next video, maybe the whole cabinet will be in here somehow. It's bigger than my shop.